Resuming debate, the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm pleased to rise in the House today as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health to support my colleague, the member for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, as we debate his very important bill, Bill C-224, the Good Samaritan Drug Overdose Act. Mr. Speaker, Canada is experiencing an unprecedented rise in accidental drug overdose deaths, particularly related to opioids such as fentanyl. As a legal pharmaceutical, fentanyl is usually prescribed for patients al already tolerant to high doses of other less powerful opioid drugs such as morphine or oxycodone. However, it can also be diverted from a legitimate source, stolen from a pharmacy or patient, or manufactured illegally in a lab. This is extremely troubling because illicit fentanyl can be mixed with or disguised as other drugs, such as oxycodone or heroin. This means people who use these drugs are not always aware of their high potency. The unknown potency of street drugs, including fentanyl, is being linked to the recent increase in accidental overdose deaths occurring across Canada, particularly in the western provinces, where it is being characterized by some health officials as a public health crisis. The majority of overdose deaths are preventable if early intervention is made. Many overdoses occur in the presence of others, and instant death is rare. The chance of surviving an overdose often depends on how quickly an individual receives medical attention. Provinces, territories, municipalities, and other public health organizations know this and are making efforts to raise awareness about how to detect the symptoms of an overdose and importance of calling 911 as the first course of action. But far too often, people are afraid to call 911 if they or a friend experience an overdose. Mr. Speaker, our 2014 Ontario survey shows that only half of individuals said they would call 911 and wait at a scene of an emergency personnel in the event of an overdose. The remainder would hold back for a fear of ne negative consequences, such as an arrest or criminal charges. Nobody would think twice about calling 911 for any other medical emergency. This is a clear sign that there are systematic barriers at play here, as well as an issue of stigma and fear that needs to be addressed. No one should be afraid to reach out for medical help in a case of an overdose. Mr. Speaker, I think all members can agree that the most important thing for emergency personnel and law enforcement to do at a scene of an overdose is to save a life. I recognize that problematic drug use is a complex issue for which there are no easy answers. But we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. Government must take a comprehensive approach that is based on evidence and that balances regulation and law enforcement with support for the health and well-being of Canadians affected by drug use and addiction. Neither the medical community nor the law enforcement community can address this issue on their own. That is why our government is committed to a balanced approach to drug policy. Health Canada has demonstrated this commitment through several recent, several recent decisions. First, through support for Dr. Peter Center and Insight, both of which are supervised consumption sites that have proven to have a positive impact on the health and well-being of, of individuals who use drugs. These centers have trained medical professionals who monitor drug users and can help save their lives in an event of an overdose. They also provide clean needles so the drug users do not contract life-threatening blood-borne diseases such as HIV or hepatitis, while also connecting with them with treatment and other health care services. In some cases, Mr. Speaker, this is their first contact with a medical professional. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, in March 2016, Health Canada removed naloxone from the federal prescription drug list, clearing the way for this life-saving drug to be purchased without a prescription. Naloxone is a drug that temporarily reverses the effects of an opioid-induced overdose. This change will make the drug more accessible to those most likely to need it, including friends and families of drug users, as well as first responders, such as paramedics or law enforcement personnel. But improving access to naloxone is only one piece of a comprehensive approach to reducing overdose deaths. 
the effects of naloxone eventually wear off and overdose symptoms can reoccur. In fact, re repeat doses of naloxone may be needed to save a life of someone who has overdosed on a stronger opioid like heroin or fentanyl. This underscore, underscores the importance of calling 911 for an overdose, even when naloxone is administered. To encourage individu in individuals to call 911 in overdose situations, Bill C-224 would provide immunity from minor possession charges to anyone who experiences or witnesses an overdose and seeks an emergency. This is a harm reduction measure that is typically known as Good Samaritan legislation and it has been implemented in more than 30 U.S. states. The Good Samaritan Drug Overdose Act is consistent with our government's approach to drug policy. It will support efforts by law enforcement to help curb overdose deaths and recognizes the importance of saving lives. Law enforcement personnel are, of, are often the first to arrive at the scene of an overdose, and in some communities, law enforcement are the only first responders available. This bill sends a clear message to all Canadians that every life matters. Bill C-224 also complements our government's efforts to curb overdose deaths, including, including through improved access to naloxone. This bill will help to ensure that people who experience or witness an overdose are not afraid to call 911 for fear of charges for minor drug possession. At the same time, let me assure the House that our government recognizes the extremely important role that law enforcement plays in drug control, and we commend the ongoing efforts of our police to protect the safety of Canadians by getting dangerous drugs off the street. We know that there are illicitly produced opioids like fentanyl that are being sold in Canada, and we know that drug trafficking brings gang activity and crime with it. That is why law enforcement efforts are focused on drug trafficking and associated violence. Our government recognizes that problematic substance abuse is both a health and safety issue and that reducing demand is an important piece of this puzzle. We believe that government has an important role to play in helping those to protect Canadians from the problems substance abuse can create. That means preventing and treating addiction, supporting recovery, reducing the negative health and social impacts of drug use on individuals and their communities. Mr. Speaker, we know that a major predictor of having an overdose is having experienced an overdose in the past. Therefore, rather than arresting those who are suffering from a disease of, of addiction, an overdose is an important opportunity for first responders to intervene and help direct individuals towards community and social services to obtain treatment for the for their illness. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I fully support Bill C-224, the Good Samaritan Drug Overdose Act. It is an example of a balanced approach to drug control. It aims to address a systematic barrier that is preventing individuals from seeking help for an overdose, while not impeding law enforcement from focusing public safety efforts on the issues that are truly at the crux of Canada's drug problem, which are drug production and trafficking. Once again, I congratulate my colleague for introducing this very important bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.